Right, today I'm fixing this Vestel 17 PW26 power supply. Now these supplies are used in so many TVs, they're used in 26 inch to 42 inch size ones. And uh, I'd say not thousands but hundreds of, of different brands of TVs these are used in. Because um, they all rebadge Vestels and there's a common issue with these is bad capacitors and the green capacitors, I've actually done videos on these before these Samsung GF caps and these Chang ones they're a common failure on these supplies and they normally uh, go high on ESR and the case bloats and you'll see the top of the cap bulges out and the cap will fail basically and that will cause these supplies to be stuck in standby especially this one, if this one fails this is the main decoupling one for the 5 volt standby if that fails the 5 volt standby dips and the set won't come on at all if these other ones fail the set will come on and then it will go back off most of the time but yeah there's quite a common issue with bad caps uh, on these and today the fault with this one was um, the set would you'd press the on button and the standby light would go from green or I think it's blue to orange um, and it'd stay orange for a second then it would go back to blue and start flashing from blue to orange and what I found is there's no 12 volt or 24 volt rails on this supply now the 12 volt rail and the 24 volt rail one for the backlight they're not driven the same as the 5 volt ones are they're actually driven by the PFC uh, area here and I believe this second MOSFET is for those two uh, it might be both, I don't know um, but yeah the 12 volt and 24 volt rails um, will come up separately from the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt rails and I was getting the 5 volt and the 3.3 volt fine and the set was working in that uh, instance but the 12 volt and the 24 volt rails were dead um, they weren't coming up at all and I found that across the main filter cap here which this is a active power factor correction supply so it has a 450 volt filter cap which should have when the set is turned on it should have around 390 volts across it I only had 330 volts across it which told me straight away the PFC for this power supply was not working, uh, it was not being turned on um, which told me that this FET here these two diodes this diode and this controller chip was not working on the power supply <coughs> those devices which I just pointed out are what run the power factor correction and when that cap gets a boosted voltage across it it then turns on that controller for the 12 volt and 24 volt rails um, now this can be dragged down uh, by this diode here uh, D881 or D893 if this diode here which is a UF5404 or UF5402 uh, if that's shorted I believe that can actually kill the PFC as well um, because it will start detecting shorted load and then it will shut down the PFC um, but that is not shorted in my case here um, I tested that and that diode tests fine and another case that I've had fail on these is, but this also caused no standby when this happened, is these two failed leaky, and they weren't short circuit, they were just leaky, and they let leakage current across them, but that caused no standby light. And this diode is for the PSC, but I don't think that, I've never seen that fail, but it possibly can. Um, <coughs> so, as those tested okay, as this tested okay, and the FET tested okay. I knew that the problem, well, they weren't shorted or anything, sorry. I knew that the problem would be with the controller chip here. And this is the controller chip for this 32 inch version of the supply. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between the 32 inch and 42 inch version is uh, the transformer size. This is for a 32 inch and a 26 inch. And if it uses a bigger transformer like that, that's for a 37 inch to 42 inch by the way um, and the only difference between them is they use different transistors and different controllers but the controller for a 32 inch one 
is a fan seven five two nine <coughs> and I was using my as handy as soloscope. I found that the VCC voltage pulsed on for a second and then went off, went away, and it was just gone. It wouldn't come back up at all. So I knew that the problem was with the controller or with the device in the area of the controller uh, being shorted, so I just used my meter in diode mode here. Done a few tests across this controller chip and found that we had quite low ohms reading across it. Uh, just trying to find my tripod here. So yeah, I found that we had pretty low ohms across that. I think it was about 180 ohms or something. Uh, across the VCC pin to ground. So I was like, right, okay, that's not healthy for this uh, controller chip at all. So uh, I thought I would uh, start checking for short circuits as well in that area. Now, there's a ceramic cap here. Let's uh, get zoom in on that. C81. Measured across that, and it was really low across that. It was about 50 ohms or so. I was like, right, okay, so something's up with this cap or the controller. So I started checking these little ones, and my meter pros broke, so it's a bit. There we go. So I started checking across these, and I couldn't get a low reading across them. And then, you know, I was checking around, checking this cap here as well, because I was getting this a pretty low reading across this one, but now it's over limited because I've removed a faulty cap. So yeah, I was checking across this and I was getting quite a low reading and uh, these two will read shorted or yeah that one and that one read shorted but I was checking across this and the, the controller chip seems to be okay ohms wise so I decided I'd pull C811 which is this cap here off the board and then she's my solder and I and just heated one end, heated the other and just pulled it off of the tweezers here. So I decided I'd take this guy out, checked across these pads again. The reading is okay. So then I checked the cap. And it's difficult to do. And then this ceramic cap is shorted. Um, it's really difficult to do because it just wants to move all over the place. But yeah, this little ceramic cap, which is for the uh, decoupling for the PFC controller, short circuit. Oh, that's just shot somewhere. And pulled that off the board. The reading across C811, the pads, is okay. So I knew that this cap is actually shorted and testing this. If I can get my meter pros on properly, which is more difficult to do than you think. As you can see this cap is showing up as short circuit and you shouldn't read that across a ceramic cap especially. So I could test this and whatever and find out what the value of it is but um, I'm pretty sure it says it in the schematic. It's probably, I think it, if I remember correctly it's about one microfarad 50 volts or so. Um, Vestal use these on a lot of their power supplies. I have this power supply here which the main transistors are short circuited and I never fixed it in the end because uh, I had, this is for a 42 inch, I had another power supply exactly the same so what I did was I just got rid of this one and just used the other one in place that I had at the time but I haven't got any more 32 inch ones left so I'm going to have to fix this but this cap is the same microfarads as on the 32 inch board so what we're going to do is steal C811 off this board solder it on here and that should fix this supply uh, I might actually show me soldering it on as well because uh, I was asked by someone uh, how, how do I solder these ceramic caps on when they're so small you know do I use tweezers I do use my fingers at times um, but I'll do it for the video's purpose using tweezers to be professional. 
So, but I'll, sol I'll solder that on, a, on the video. Uh, yeah, but uh, I've never had this problem before on this supply, but um, hopefully uh, I can fix it. Um, but that's not the only fault I'm going to be correcting on this either. Uh, I'm not just going to replace that ceramic cap and be done with the supply because that's not going to be a good job. There's still other, other work that needs to be done regardless of replacing that short cap. <clears throat> I guess what I could do is uh, replace that cap and test the supply um, because all these other ones they checked out fine for ESR but I'm just going to replace those straight away. Um, because if there's something else wrong, I can just fix it. So yeah, I'm replacing this guy, this guy, this guy. That one's okay, that's a Samsung GK. And they're normally, or well, a KM actually, they're normally okay. That's a HEC, they're normally fine. Um, all these green Samsung caps are going to be replaced. I didn't mean to mark that one there, but this cap, this cap, this cap, this cap, this cap. And these three are going to be replaced. And the values of these on these supplies are that's a 2,200 mic or 2,700 microfarad 16 volt. And that's a 220 microfarad 25. That's a 2,200 6.3. That's a 2,200 6.3. That's a 1,035. These two on nearer the heatsink are 470 35s. This one and this one. I'm going to add a cap there as well um, because it helps filter out noise for the 24 volt rail and reduces stress on this one. Uh, that's a 1050 volt, but you can actually just use a 1035 volt on these supplies um, fine because that's only for the 24 volt rail and you can use a 1035 volt there or a 470, whatever. These two are 1016s and that's a 1035 as well. So. Alright, so we're going to desolder the caps now. So I'm just cleaning off my soldering iron tip here. Um, get that nice and tinned. So I'm going to just plug this on. Plug this in, whatever. So to desolder a ceramic cap, it's easy. Just heat one side. Heat the other. Heat the other. And just keep doing this. And there you go. Just come straight off. And you don't lift any pads. And just go over with your iron to... Retin the pads and just clean off any solder off that. And there you go, that's the ceramic cap removed off this other supply. Chuck that over there. And by the way, I checked if that was shorted or not before I desoldered it, so don't worry. And then <coughs> here's the uh, original one, and we just clean these pads off here a little. And get this back on and just set this on the board. Just tack one side to the uh, board here. It's really difficult with the camera in the way, of course. Just tack one side on, go to the other side. Now you flow a bit of fresh solder onto that. And then do the same for the first side. Of course, give it time to cool down as well. Because if you don't, it'll just slide off the board. Okay, so now we've replaced that cap, I'm going to get the meter back up, set it to diode mode again. So I'm just going to do a quick test across that area now, see what reading we get. Just have to make sure my probes are working. And that looks healthy to me, and test across this one, because this one was showing up as pretty bad as well. And that looks fine as well, so... Before it was, it wasn't a dead short in circuit, but out of circuit it was, and it's just gone to OL now as well. And my probes are working. It's gone to OL because the circuits uh, got a little energized, and this, one of the gates or something probably opened, so that's all good. So now I'm going to show you how I recap without using desolder and braid or anything. I might do a separate video on all this. I don't know. Um, and I only use a crappy Maplin solder and iron that 
everyone in bad cap seems to hate but I've always had good luck out of these so all I do use one finger to grab one side of the cap under the board heat one of the legs and then just push it out like so like that and then just use the tip of the iron to move the solder out of the way now this is a little difficult with the camera in the way like that you see really difficult with the camera in the way but there we go then you can just push the cat leads through and the replacement one and there's an old one out of the way and just slide this in here like so I'm just using some reused capacitors again for this board because it's a Vestel I'm not going to I normally do use brand new high quality ones but I sort of cut down because I, I don't really service well I don't buy these faulty uh, LCD ones anymore I only really buy faulty LED ones but if this is a customer as this is a customer set uh, of course I'll replace the caps anyway but if this was mine and a few years back I would actually use brand new ones but there we go job done <laughs> so recap this now and then we'll give it a test alright so I've got it all recapped and this is going to be the smoke test <coughs> um, primary side failures like this aren't the best thing to be fixing because they could go boom when you turn it on so it's smoke test And I heard the PSC start, and it makes like a, a little bit of a weird noise. Like Power supply is making a lot louder noise, which is good. Could blow up though, so you just got to be careful. So backlight is on, which means the PSC is on, and we have 24 volt and 12 volts. Normal picture on there as well. And the problem is solved. So, just that shorted ceramic cap, which is all good. Sweet. And I also reapplied the thermal adhesive on this attempted heat sink. Uh, <coughs> Vestel used double sided tape for it, so I, I used thermal silicon, which was a lot better. It's a crappy little heat sink. <laughs> God. But yeah, I'm uh, going <clears> to <throat> run this for a bit now and uh, see if it lasts, so it's on at least, so let's keep running this. Alright, so it's been testing for a while, it's all nice and toasty as well, really warm this middle heatsink gets, so of course the CPU heatsink's pretty hot. And uh, going to put it on for 24 hours and uh, I think that should be it for this set <coughs> um, but what I'll do is I'll test it for 24 hours and if anything comes up I'll video it so uh, hopefully this can help someone so yeah we'll see what happens after 24 hours <coughs> 